<laughs> I am a completely non-organized uh, speaker. And that means I never have a note. I never have a clue what's going to come out of this mouth. Only a direction. But what I am intent upon today is raising the energy of this group and getting everybody off of their seats and excited about what's transpiring at this time on our planet. And I mean literally off your seats. By the time we end this, I'd like to see a big, gigantic, mega galactic hug where people touch each other. Because we're in our brains way too much. Don't you think? <laughs> and, you know, mysticism is wonderful, but, you know, let's get it to the human level where we're celebrating being here. Because many of us recognize that we're starseed. Starseed from other systems. How many of you know that you are? I think we kind of all are. And uh, some people who are starseed are having a real problem being grounded in Earth reality enough to celebrate the passing. So that's what I'm about. Celebrate the passing. You're here now. Child of Earth, Gaia, you came in for a reason. And it is time to understand your starseed mission and start celebrating what is transpiring on this planet and what you've come to do. So isn't that what I said I was going to talk about? So, so far, so good. But if you see me lose track completely, don't worry, because I have a flood of information coming on when I'm speaking, and sometimes it's really hard to do this when I've got this going on. So bear with me. Okay, I would like to give you a little overview of the information that I've been blessed to bring through in these years. In case you haven't got the information, what I'm particularly interested in discussing today is the ascension of our solar system, because we've got a lot of confusion about the ascension. Some people are talking about ascension as an individual process. Some people are talking about ascension as a planetary process. And the Syrians, who are the beings that I am in touch with, are speaking about solar ascension, which has got me very excited. How many of you have read the book, Atlantis Rising? Well, guys, get that book. <laughs> <laughs> no! All right, well, I'd like to walk you through that because it's quite a revolutionary. Of all the books that I've, I've uh, brought through, that one is really, really out there. In fact, in the middle of that process, hello, come in. Don't be afraid. <laughs> uh, I actually stopped in the middle of the book and said, I'm really grateful and honored to be of service here, but this is the one where they locked me in a cell. So the council said, all right, Get over fear, we'll be back. And it took me a little while to do that, and then I came back with a vengeance, fearless, and brought through the rest of the Syrian revelations. Why I was in fear <laughs> was because of the extraordinary impact of this information, of what was being said, and how that would impact um, the Earth at that time, which was two th 2000, the book came out. And uh, it was way before we heard anything about chemtrails or harp or anything like that. And that was uh, discussed in the book. But that's not what I want to talk about. I would like to talk to you about what the Syrians say is really happening now. And there, there is enough contradiction that I think it's kind of good to analyze and examine all the different uh, considerations of what ascension really is. And then we decide for ourselves what resonates. This is what resonates for me. The council describe how the process of ascension is a solar process. That it isn't just an individual experience. It isn't just the Earth ascending out of its shell of the, the physical uh, reality. But rather, our sun is about to move through its own astral tubes and uh, vibrate at a higher much more light body resonance than it currently is. So let's talk about that. Oh, I'm supposed to stand behind the X's. Um, we know that we are light beings come down to have this earthly experience and then move back into the light, wherever that station will be. But how about the idea that every cosmic being is a similar light being? And every cosmic being also comes into 3D to experience physicality and then also moves on. Does that work for you? Okay, good. 
The council described this process as solar ascension, and they have experience because as far as the information that I've uh, brought through, they describe the process of the Syrian triunal star system as having already gone through this process partially. Sirius B, Sirius A is that beautiful blue white star that sits in this night sky inspiring us all. Sirius B has, according to them, I'll, I'll stop saying according to them because that's my reference point, uh, has already half a million years ago ascended to the sixth dimension, and that's where I'm picking that information up from. And then Sirius C, Anu, that might ring a bell for some of you, is at the fourth dimension and sort of stuck there for reasons that have to do with its own evolutionary pace. The fourth dimension being a sort of a clearing station where karma is confronted, planetary karma is confronted. And uh, here we have Nibiru, planet X, uh, directly affiliated with that star. <coughs> Excuse me. They describe how when this process took place and the cosmic deity simply moves through its own astral tube. I love this. Forget black holes. Consider that these black holes are nothing more than astral tubes, and these cosmic beings journey through them to their next station on the evolutionary ladder of consciousness ascending. Um, Nibiru, the fated planet X, is one planet that was um, What's the word? Thank you! Orbiting that star, and for reasons that have to do with its own vibration, it didn't make it. Now, there's a lot of conversation about Planet X in these days with the doomsday Armageddon stuff, which I'm going to get into. But according to them, the star did not make it because, uh, sorry, the planet did not make it along with that ascending star because of its frequency, and therefore was catapulted out in the process of that. Uh, star going through its own tube. It was catapulted out. It ricocheted from <laughs> uh, Sirius to into our own Ra, our star's orbit, and has been ricocheting back and forth ever since in this elliptical orbit between the two star systems, which sounded very ridiculous to me at the time I was channeling it. And then, lo and behold, a few months ago, NASA comes out with a report. This report says, to my joy and, uh, what's the word, eclatation? Is there such a word? Eclatation? I have just invented a new word, eclatation. To my joy and eclatation, I read this article from NASA that says, we now know that it's possible that, st uh, that stars are not actually, uh, that black, sorry, black to, Black holes are not necessarily what we thought, these incredibly um, destructive magnetic uh, places in space where everything that enters is sucked into infinity and, and destroyed immediately. But rather, it could be that these are actually passages into other dimensions. Yay! Better! It gets better! We also believe that it is possible that a star's planetary body could, in the process of that happening, actually get ejected and float in free space or be attracted to two stars' gravitational pull. And I was like, wait a minute. This is right out of the book. Hoo Science is catching up with us, guys. How wonderful is this? So as bizarre as that does sound, uh, it's now being validated by science. I am also happy to tell you that my books are in the NASA library. So maybe they got a little inspiration. Because you know, they really are. NASA and a lot of other our institutions are following Star Trek and all the out there people like me and like Dolores and many others here and uh, saying, hmm, maybe this is the right way to go here. So that said, if NASA and any other scientific uh, group is able to actually confirm almost verbatim such a concept, they've got my attention. 